Hey, what's up guys? We're at Wonderland today. We had a crazy stressful night last night. Crazy stressful day this morning and uh, so we haven't really been vlogging that much. But we're here now and we're ready to play. James didn't go to sleep until one o'clock in the morning yesterday so he's really cranky. We woke Joe up early this morning so he's really cranky. So all over gonna be a great day. Just for a sec. They're going to fight with each other. You're going to fight so each sad. other? Yeah. It's so sad to hold Johnny's living because he's like. Poor Joe. I found it. Pine cone. It's the irritator. This is what it looks like when an irritator evolves. The irritator. So these were really cool because it looks like they were emerging from the grass. Then the landscape were called the grass, so now it just looks like they don't have legs. They walk around on stumps. Oh, he's not very happy about it. <coughs> Mr. Joe, are you okay? Daddy, Daddy, yeah. Yep. Can I come up here? Here we are, This is the best part. They actually made them breathe. Jay, make his mouth move. I think it's really crazy that like when they made the movie Jurassic Park, this was the best technology that they had and it didn't even work properly at the time. And now we just have it in an amusement park. And like, not only that, we have it in a way that kids can make it work. The one thing I don't like about this is everything's so like loose. It's just like, I think jiggles. <laughs> That's because these dinosaurs are typical of society today, Alex. They're jiggly? Yeah. <laughs> like I'm in disbelief, like you hear about fossils and dinosaurs and stuff, but you're in disbelief that something like this can exist. And the sign over there said that they travel in herds of 10,000. 11,000 pounds. His hands are big, his arms are bigger than my butt. Look at what I found. What is that? The bones? It's a tooth. It's a tooth. Look at, look at the tooth. Amazing. You digging up dinosaurs, Joey? Wow. Oh. I mean, I think I found the ramp. Wow. You can see all the things. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up, Poach. I found the bone. I'm scared. Oh, look at his belly button. It didn't look so weird to me until I went to the doctors the other day and I realized how much it needs a surgery. Yeah. Because now you can feel something behind it. Yep. Bye, Maya. I think there must have been a sale on Yang Tyrannosaurus because there's like two of every other dinosaur and then like 40 of these. I didn't fight my way to the top of the food chain to eat salad. That's the top of the food chain. This is not. I really hate this one so much. <laughs> tired James is screaming. When you get that tired, why would you want to use that much energy to be bad? I, know. I like it like a slug. I just kind of like <laughs> lay around like a cold lizard, <laughs> waiting for it to be over. I'm I've sorry. never gotten an opportunity to read these because I've always been looking after the kids. Read them then. I am. Awesome. I like to see big herbivores. Why? I, don't know. I share kinship with them. They'd kill me, but I share kinship with them in my heart. Whenever I see a T-Rex, in my head it's like da 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 da. Jurassic Park? Someone was eight years old. Have you never seen Jurassic Park since? Come on, buddy. Joey. You want to hold my hand? Poor guy. Hey, look. Try as I might, I can't keep Joe out of a puddle. And not only is he in the puddle, but he fell in the puddle. It's really pretty. Oh my god. Oh my god, that's so sad, babe. What happened to them all? Are we sure they're not alive? That one's not. 
What do we do with him? Oh, there's another one. Is No, it's, oh. And we were in the middle of a really crazy day today. And we went out for a little walk to clear our heads and we found a nest of baby birds that had fallen on the floor. They're all dead except for him. Yeah, so. It was very sad. Now I guess we have to find the Toronto Wildlife Center. I feel really bad right now. Yeah, it's very sad. When we were out walking, we called Toronto Wildlife Center to see if they could take the baby bird. Just after I got off the phone with them, I opened up the internet in order to put up a post and ask people what the best thing to do for him was in the meantime before we could get him somewhere and my phone died so we walked home in order to charge it and when we got into the house the bird died. That was really crappy because I really really wanted to help him and I guess that he was just too injured right. for us to help him. So. I decided to take a little walk by myself. So I want to tell you guys something that I've been thinking about. So we found that baby bird today and we really, really wanted to help him. And hear me out before you jump to any conclusions about what I'm talking about. For the majority of my life, what I was being programmed to believe was that human lives mattered and every other life was, was mostly inconsequential. And I was just given the excuse that it was the circle of life. For a lot of my life, I did not treat the world as if every life mattered and I was responsible for the death of thousands of animals and I feel really guilty about that now. When I think about it at certain times, it makes me feel really sick. You know, because I know what it's like to not be aware of the idea that every life matters just as much as mine, I can't be too hurt on people who who don't realize that yet. You know, since I became a vegan, I've been really, really focused on trying really hard to undo the damage that was done to me emotionally when I was made to feel that I was more important than every other living thing. And I feel sometimes like I've tried so, so hard to focus on that, that it's become like this mantra or like this idea that is something I have to recite to myself and force myself to feel as opposed to something that I always really feel naturally. You know, so today we found that baby bird and we picked him up and we were trying to help him and when we got back to our apartment, Alex said to me, Hey T, I think he's dying. And I and I said, what, what do you mean? And I turned around and, and Alex looked down at his hands and he had this weird expression on his face and he said, I think he's dead actually. So I went and I took him out of Alex's hands and I held him in my hand and I tried poking at him and making him move and he was dead. So I held him in my hand for like an hour and I just sat and I looked at him and I thought about a lot of things. When I was a kid, I used to dream all the time about flying and I'm sure that like everybody else can relate. Everybody's had similar dreams and you're up in the air and you're looking down at everyone and everything and you're so amazed and then you wake up and you have this feeling of like complete disappointment, like the, the most disappointed that you could be. When I was a kid, I used to lie down on the ground and I would look up at the sky and I would see birds flying and I would think of how lucky that they are that they get to experience the things that they get to experience and how different their lives are than mine. So I was sitting in the living room holding this baby bird. It made death so real to me and I was thinking about how it was never gonna fly. You know, like I said, it's really, really hard to always come back to that point where like you realize that every single little life matters when it's something that you're fighting so hard for other people to see. To experience that today, to hold the baby bird who had just died, who's Life really does matter, it does. And it's really, really sad that he fell out of the tree. And it's really, really sad that he's never ever gonna get to fly. And, you know, and I, and I think that I realized for myself again that it's such a big deal to make people understand. Everybody deserves to live. Everybody deserves to be free. If you guys have anything to say, feel free to write it in the comments. I don't even know how to finish this right now. So I'll talk to you guys soon.